That thing looks like the winding machine I used in the Valadilen station. I've got to find a way of getting the train up here. Hmm. Oh. We need to go tell Oscar about this. Look like something has happened. It is a collapse. Kate Walker! Kate Walker! Come <laughs> over here, please! I have something to say to you! Yeah, I'm sorry to say to me, yeah, you went back at you, you little punk. Da 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 <laughs> Happy niece. Yes, Oscar, what is it? A message has arrived for you. A message? You have been summoned to see the rectors. They are the highest authority at the university. They want to talk to you. Talk to me? Really? Yes, to the person responsible for the train. So, I'm in charge now. Sure, okay. <laughs> but why would these gentlemen want to see me at all? They do not say why, just that it's very important. Everything okay, Oscar? Yes, Kate Walker. I am awaiting your instructions. Um... Oscar, there's no way you could help me find a way to wind the train back up again? Rust awaits my every movement if I leave this train, Kate Walker. And what would you do with a rusty engine driver? Hmm. Not a lot, I suppose. This train might be a wonder of technology, but the engine's limited autonomy is a liability. You got to admit that. I am afraid I refuse to entertain this consideration, Kate Walker. You should take a look around the station, Oscar. It's amazing. <laughs> Greenhouses that are all lit up, exotic trees, and thousands of birds of all different colors. I am obliged to avoid exposing my wheel work to corrosive bird excreta. I shall remain inside to monitor the locomotive. Of course. Well, too bad for you. Oscar, see you later, alligator. In a while, Kate Walker. You have a dozen force for the war possession of that bad. Um oh, I think I'm gonna get this left. If you want more takes while I'm gonna get a walk through for this one. This is part two of Borkenstein. I think I'm gonna go this way. Because that's the only way I have a Gone into. Yeah, let's go. Um. Wow. Okay, cool. Hmm. There's a boss in there. Hello. Can I help you? Why well, can't you help me? <laughs> Hello. Hey, baby, you party? You sure looking mighty fine. Love those big round eyes. <laughs> Just who do you think you are? <laughs> hey, spunky. Like a 
Okay, I'm home. Come on, doll. I'll let you buy me that coffee. <laughs> I don't remember ever asking. Hey, don't play hard to get. I know you like it big time. Listen, kid. Go back home and play with your toy cars and forget you ever saw me. <laughs> it's just a very bad. Oh, um. Okay. That <laughs> was interesting. Okay. Oh yeah, this is my favorite cover once we go up the stairs. Uh, we can go this way. That looks derpy. That skeleton of the mama. So derpy. Is this a lecture hall? It's a theater. No point. It's locked. Uh, is this a, I have to go here and discuss them and buy something. Okay. Um See the person I'm meant to talk to? Excuse me. Sir, please just a moment. Yes, what is it? I'm not deaf, you know. I am sorry to disturb you in your work, sir, but this young mammoth this primigenius is barely 40,000 years old. Fantastic, wouldn't you say, miss? Uh, yes. Probably. What do you mean, probably? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> well, you, you don't know, I see. What can I do for you, my dear child? Arriving in Barrackstadt is an amazing experience. I've never seen such a station. Let's go ask all the questions. In train? Yes. In a kind of clockwork train with a spring mechanism that winds down regularly. You mean you drive a train? Young ladies of today never cease to amaze me. Oh, oh my god. No. I'm not the engineer. The train's engineer is actually an automaton. I am sorry, all this probably sounds very strange. A clockwork train driven by an automaton? I once knew a man long ago who could have invented such a train. It was he who designed the bandstand in the main square. Ah, to think that he was even capable of creating such a gadget. He was astounding, a true genius. But oddly, at the same is time, he? he was also almost a child. It was as if his mental and physical evolution had definitively halted at the age of ten. Can you believe that? Hans? Uh, yes. I think I can believe that. At least I'm beginning to. To tell you the truth, I'm looking for Mr. Hans Varlberg. He's the sole heir of a very unusual factory. My company is in charge of negotiations for the takeover of this factory. Uh, at last word, he was living in Siberia. So, as soon as my train is ready, I'll be continuing my journey eastwards. 
Siberia. Ah, Siberia. But, but what was it you said again? Said what? You mentioned a name. The person you are looking for. Vorlberg. Hans Vorlberg. Do you know him? Hans Vorlberg. How could I forget him? Such an extraordinary fellow. So inventive. We shared a passion for mammoths, you know. And we bonded over this passion. Mm. Without it, I confess, I would have had little to do with an odd, ageless retard like Hans. Hey! At the time, we were both students. Well, sort of. Put it this way. Hans had special permission to attend paleontology lectures. You see, he didn't really have the necessary qualifications. In exchange, Hans did a few odd jobs around the university. Your Hans Varlberg sounds uncannily like the one I'm looking for. I'm not sure, my dear. Hans was above all questions of money and business. Just to imagine him running a factory, <laughs> perish the thought. Can you tell me a little bit more about him? Perish you, he asshole. Was always a mystery to me. He never said very much, and never quite seemed to grasp what you said to him. He expressed himself instead through his incredible mechanical contraptions. His inventions, I admit, have been much appreciated by the university. The few times we really did talk, it was about his strange interest for mammoths and a doll. Some sort of doll that obsessed him. A doll, you say? The mammoth yes. doll. He kept talking about it. One day he described it to me. A sort of children's toy. A miniature mammoth mounted by a mount. It appears he found it in a cave not far from his home. The event all sounds very dramatic. His account was slightly confused, but it awoke a great interest in me. What do you mean? To my knowledge, there was only one tribe who made figurines featuring a mouth, and that tribe is the Yukols. They live in the farthest reaches of Siberia, and for them, the dolls constituted a sacred object, illustrating one of their central legends, how such a doll made the journey from the frozen Siberian north to a cave in the French Alps is a mystery to me. Even today, it is beyond my comprehension. Have you considered that Hans Varlberg was maybe making it up? You said yourself- Siberia itself is a chimera that paleontologists of the world are very fond of pursuing. I'll leave you in peace. I hope I haven't disturbed you too much. Sorry? No, 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 not at all, my dear child. 